Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> yes, Atma Namaste, people. Good evening. 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 Good you can finish it today, Amit. All right, everybody. So let's begin. Um, close your eyes, connect onto your palate. Just inhale and exhale, relax the body. Feel yourself in the presence of all these great beings, teachers, masters. And let's invoke to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokok, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Mary. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, healing ministers, healing angels, especially to the great angels and beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and our internet connection, to our soul and divine self. We humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your knowledge, for your wisdom. We ask you to bless us today with greater clarity and understanding so we may understand these priceless teachings on a deeper level. Help us to be able to assimilate this knowledge and use it practically on a regular basis as we offer ourselves as instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma, Namaste. Welcome everybody. Hope you're doing well and you're ready for the weekend. I'm waiting for the weekend. <laughs> it's good to... Have a t some time to also relax the body. No, we can't teach that often, no? <laughs> okay, fine. So let's move on. Uh, so we're going back to the chapter on mesmerism. And uh, we were supposed to talk about uh, these two aspects. That's what I mean. Yeah. I'm just pulling it up so it's easier for me to read. So it says that it would appear that the, et that the etheric mechanism of the body consists basically of two distinct divisions. And we're referring to very uh, different systems in the body. And so they say the first one is the unconscious and connected to the sympathetic, um, I presume, nervous system. And the other with the conscious voluntary system, which is the cerebrospinal system. So these are the two systems they talk about. And they say that mesmerism, Yes, could affect the could affect the former, but sorry, one second. Would not therefore uh, be able to affect the former, but it is possible for it to affect the latter. Yes, and so that is something we have to remember, which means that the person who's doing this, uh, he, the operator, cannot actually interfere with the breathing or the circulatory or the blood. Uh, the circulatory system of the person. He can, however, influence the other system. So something for us to remember that it's not possible for them to, to play havoc, uh, ha hopefully, uh, with, the, uh, with the system. He cannot do that to the help of the patient. So they say that, this is why it's explained uh, when you look at theosophy, that uh, there, there exists the two main forms of uh, energy, right, within the physical form. And so they say that, energizing the etheric body with prana and uh, the automatic <laughs> prana for the dense body. Now, I can't remember the automatic uh, prana. Do you remember the automatic prana? I only remember the atomic prana. Right, <laughs> so that me. was a new I'm word for me suddenly and I was like, where is this from? Anyway, so uh, they refer to it that there are basically two forms, right? Anyway, basically saying that there's certain prana basically used for the energy body for me, and there's another prana, which is the uh, automatic prana for the dense or the physical body that you and I can touch, right? And then they go on to talk about, in the case of magnetic healing, yes, uh, it is eminently desirable that the mesmerist, yes, the operator, as they called them earlier, is actually in good health. Because otherwise, when he or she actually pours into the patient, right, the energy, the prana, it's not only the prana that goes into the patient, but also part of their own, uh, what we call emanation. 
right? And so if that instrument, that uh, mesmerous body is not fully healthy, you might actually transfer some of the diseased energy into your patient. And so it's very important for the mesmerist uh, to be healthy. And so they say uh, it is possible for the operator to, con to uh, convey physical disease, right? Or in our case, uh, diseased energy towards the patient. And also, if there are certain issues with the person on the emotional and the mental level, right? And so they say, as the mental and astral matter are also thrown into the subject, moral and mental diseases may also then be transferred towards the patient. Right, so that is something that happens uh, with uh, in the case of magnetic healing, according to them. Interesting, they call it magnetic healing, but then they say uh, they call it the mesmerist. So it's a little confusing unless I've got it all wrong, right? And then they go on further. Then they say, for similar reason, a mesmerist may thus, even unconsciously, have a great influence over the subject. Yes, whether they're aware of it or not, they do gain this. And uh, this is something that, that, that actually the person has a great amount of power, which they can easily misuse. And so they say, any quality of heart or mind possessed by the mesmerist is very readily again transferred into the subject. So not only do they have control over their subject, they can actually transfer this onto the subject. And hence the avenues of possible danger, in this case, I would say misuse of power. Right. And so we have to be very careful about that. And that's something Master Joe makes it very clear when he teaches us. He says, listen, you have to be careful that when you use the techniques, so you only use it to bring about greater health. Yes. Uh, better relationships, better mental health, not to cause any further problems, <laughs> relationship uh, health wise or definitely physically. Yes. And so moving on, uh, mesmerism purely for curative purposes, which means they're using this technique to heal, right? To cure someone by those who understand what they are doing and of course are trustworthy and will not abuse this has much to be said for. Uh, the purpose should not be used otherwise, right? So it is advisable for them to use it to bring about greater health and cure for another person and not misuse it. And that is something that Master Cho reminds us regularly. You want to say something? Or? Um, okay, so I was looking for the sympathetic and uh, okay, so basically what they're trying to say is, I think we mentioned this earlier about the, you see the, when you're doing healing or mesmerizing, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, affect, because remember I said the chakras have consciousness of their own. And the body, the organs also have a consciousness of their own. You know, they process everything. So that is connected with a different system uh, and different energy. Um, oh, sorry. Thank you for reminding me. We didn't go live. It's okay. It's just me talking. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for reminding me. Anyway, so it's yes, the same so. thing that we were uh, discussing earlier about. So, so I think that's just a repetition or I'm repeating myself. So uh, that's the body system. Yeah. So it doesn't affect obviously uh, the whole body. Right. Um, now, uh, a mesmerist would therefore not be able to get, uh, because you, know, you see, uh, in those days, people needed concrete examples. Like they're thinking, oh, if you move the fluid away, since the body requires that fluid, you know, during that time, will that part function or not? Yes, it would function. Yes, it would function. Okay. It's just that um, it's happening in parallel. All right. It's happening in parallel. Okay. Uh, then that's what it says. Now, this may perhaps be the explanation of the statement in Theosophy Prana exists in two main forms in the physical body. I don't know what automatic prana is. Uh, the, in chapter two, I remember about the physical elemental automatically uh, recharging and you have, that's why you have uh, high vitality during the day, low vitality in the evening. Uh, in the sleep, you know, yeah. remember low vitality. So that's automatic. In the wee hours of the morning, it's low. What could be this automatic prana? <laughs> I don't know what automatic prana is. You see, that's why in Theosophy, the way they describe things is extremely <laughs> confusing, uh, at least to me. And when Master Chua and, uh, was discussing it, even for him, the, the, the terms they use, what is automatic prana? Did they have automated stuff in 1925? Because what they're thinking, what we're thinking automatic, like, you know, uh, automatic car, automatic elevator, automatic escalator. 
I don't think they're talking about that automatic. So I'm thinking, what is their automatic in 1925? What was automatic in 1925? I don't know. Maybe you could just switch on the light. And the you know, light they car. barely had a car. You know, the car was like really not automatic at all. <laughs> right? So what do they mean by I think it's just auto. You know, it just auto. works. Yeah. Maybe it just happens you see, on its own. It might not mean, that's why you have to be very careful when you're reading these books. It not, not, might not, what you mean automatic today may or may not mean automatic in 1925, 100 years ago, or 90 years ago, 95 years 95. ago. 95. So, you know. Um, uh, but I also think because these were written by different authors, right? It's, it's a combination. It. No, yeah, so it may be even before 19. No, this is written by him because this is not by anyone. Correct. Um, so we have to figure out what he meant by that. That's yeah, so I'll have to research what automatic uh, meant in 1925. <laughs> in what context was it used? And then I'll maybe come back to you if you're so interested in it. Nothing, it's just... Because, you know, if, I, if we find out the answer, we can't really use it because it's just information right now. It's good to know for learning purposes, but I don't see the, the practical aspect. Correct. Um, you see, because I, I, I remember someone telling me, and even Master Chua was talking about it, um, but I don't know whether he also heard about it, or whether someone, uh, automatic is natural breath. Oh, she's asking, is it? Ah, uh, is it? I have no idea. How will I know? I, I just told you. I no, know. breath is not necessarily only prana, right? If they meant natural, they say natural. Because you had artificial and natural. You had machines those days. So that could be understood. So you can see the, you know, naturally occurring prana and infused prana. That would make more sense. Oh, is that what they mean? Uh, mm. Prana that's put in and... It's for the dense body. The automatic prana is for the dense body. And they say that they're just prana for the etheric body. Maybe because the body has a consciousness of its own. Yeah, so because it's I'm saying it's automated prana. inside. In the they system. don't know what automating is, right? Yeah, I have I to check. Okay, Maybe fine. Nikolai Tesla would be able to... I don't know what they Anyway, so... Uh, Go to the next paragraph. <laughs> yeah. You see, because in before, uh, the word awful means when you tell someone, it means when I look at you, I'm full of awe. Yeah. Right? So you say, oh, you're so awful. I'm so, awful. <laughs> so, you know, today, if you say something like awful. that, it would mean something else, right? It's so the, the opposite. <laughs> literally the opposite. Actually, it, it does make sense. The, the older version makes sense, you know? The you knew I version. Who twisted it. I don't know who twisted it. Or which but generation it twisted, twisted it somewhere. But I think the older one. Oh, I understand. You know, awe inspiring. You yeah. know, awesome. Uh, awesome. Um, but Everything awful. Is awesome. You know. So anyway. <laughs> All right. I remember when I was in school, people used to like saying, "You look fat." You're like P H E T, fat, right? You look cool. So F A T, but it's pronounced the same thing. So fat means cool. P H E T. And fat is, you have fat more than you should. Um, Rather, we're not too sure because in the earlier thing, he, he hasn't referred to, Tucker, to it yeah. as uh, automatic uh, prana. That's why we're not too sure. Is what prana responsible for cellular and organ subconscious? Uh, yes, uh, in a way, but not really prana. It's that life energy that comes from the seed. That's my understanding. That's the one that gives it the functionality. But the... Uh, it's the power aspect, but the, you know, it programs, but eventually it does have a consciousness of its own. Remember I told you about the astral body, the shell, even after the soul withdraws, it's still there. Uh, you know, it has a, still the consciousness still there, it's still degenerating, but it's still there. So it might mimic you, but it's not really, no one's inside. The life right, is still so. there. Uh, no, life is there. No, in the cells, it's still there. It's, no, no, I'm talking about the, when we were talking about the astral shell, you know, in the, in the death. You know, oh, no, no, not that, that. shell. So, okay, now let's move on. As in the case of magnetic healing, it is obviously eminently desirable that a mesmerist should be physically healthy. You know, this, this, I should learn to write like this. I am eminently desirable. <laughs> As in, uh, you know, for healing. Uh, for a healer or magnetizer pours into the patient not only prana, but also his own emanations. And in this way, you'll get arrested today, right? If you start talking like this, <laughs> now I shall pour my emanations into you. Um, uh, and in this way, it is possible for the operator to convey physical disease. We have already addressed this in the previous chapter for, for healing. I gave you the example of the president of a bank and the stress and all those kind of things, right? So um, further, as astral and mental matter are also thrown, that I already gave the example. So that is covered in the last chapter. 
uh, for similar reasons, uh, but they, it's good to repeat it because you know this is important because if you heal when you are very stressed or when you are angry or irritable, there will be definitely uh, contamination uh, or transmission of energy uh, from you to the to the patient, the patient, and in that the patient might become worse. Okay. So for similar reasons, the mesmerist may thus even unconsciously gain great influence. Again, unconsciously, may thus even subconsciously. Anyway, um, over his subject. Uh, so when he's sleeping, he gains influence, or sub maybe probably subconsciously. A far greater power than is generally known, any quality of heart or mind possessed by the... Um, you see... What I understand mesmerizing process is that the agnya becomes very small, so there is very little um, resistance from the patient. So if the healer so desires, instead of putting just prana or energy into the part or his own vital emanation or whatever they call it before, right? They put that thing inside the fluid, right? Uh, he can even put his uh, program or uh, thought form, all right? When you, you know, you will love me forever, you know, so, or something like that, you know, usually these things are misused for either sexual gain or financial gain. Otherwise, you know, there's, that's the only two major, uh, you know, people at that level would be wanting either those two things only most of the time. So, um, so that is, of course, not permitted and uh, will generate tremendous amount of negative karma. Uh, it's not mentioned here, but that is it. Um, According to what I heard, if you continue to do that, uh, you will be probably born mentally challenged in the next few incarnations, if you do believe in incarnations. But the karma generated means that you are not entitled to free thinking. So your own thinking process, you will be, uh, your mental body will be damaged, you know, when you take the next incarnation. Because you are not entitled to use your mind because you didn't allow the other person to use their mind. And that's probably what happened, I'm guessing, because I was in there 2,000 something years ago, most likely not, um, with Jesus healing the possessed person when the, uh, when the, when the um, uh, demons or elementals were telling him, you know, it's not yet our time to leave. And this has happened a couple of times. This has happened a couple of times, but we won't go into it. Uh, you know, this has happened two, three times uh, with people. Uh, an advantage because you know you don't know what you did before so don't worry about the past it's easier to plan your future um an advantage possessed by mesmerism over healing okay this, so we're done right mesmerism purely for curative purposes yeah so now yours <laughs> all right so my turn so when you um uh, when you as a healer as a brand healer as long as you follow the um the steps of pranic healing, cleansing your hands, using a disposable unit, this kind of transference cannot actually occur, right? So you don't have to worry about getting the disease or even putting what you want there because we always start with an invocation, remember, right? We're asking for help and blessings. That whatever goes, it's not just actually your energy in pranic healing, right? It's also the energies from above that go through. So hopefully most of it is from above and there's very little of yours. Uh, and also less contamination from the patient to you if you just follow the protocols of musculature. Yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, pranic healing. Let's move on. An advantage possessed by mesmerism, they're comparing this to healing, healing of diseased energy by the use of will. Remember earlier we spoke about how you use the will to kind of move or pass and things like that. So we're talking about that. So they say with the healing uh, of disease by will, is that when will forces are poured down into the physical, that there is a danger that it might actually push back or drive the uh, energy back into the most subtle bodies, that is into the astral body or the mental body. This is basically the origin of most problems that you and I have, right? So when you have asthma, for example, it's usually people normally, right, uh, emotional in nature. When they can't get attention, when they feel they can't express themselves, they go into that state uh, and that becomes a problem. So until and unless you've taken it out of the root, we say in pranic healing, your, your patient's uh, disease is not completely cured. Now, there are others that are purely physical, but here we're talking about the aspect of uh, the emotional and the mental. And so they say 
the final working out of the physical plane of the evil, which actually origins, uh, which, which, which is actually originating in the mind or the emotion, is then inhibited. So the healing doesn't happen. However, they say curative mesmerism, which we spoke about earlier, is free from this danger. This doesn't happen. But I'm very confused because just earlier they said you could transfer the thoughts and emotions <laughs> into the patient. But here they say from the patient, you aren't able to do proper healing, right? With, with will. You're not able to pull out that energy properly. It can actually go back into the root cause, um, which for some reason for me is not very clear and I don't understand why they're saying that. But anyway, the distinction is that when you are trying to do healing with mesmerism, you want to use it purely to help someone and cure someone. Do not take advantage of the power of that system uh, where you might be able to overpower your patient and even get them to do what you want, right? Whereas with healing by will, that doesn't happen. We just have to see to it that we direct the energy that is not conducive for them out of the body by using those passes and then use prana to kind of re-fill uh, that area which we cleansed or we moved or passed our hands over, right? Now, they go on to give you this example of uh, what actually happens. So they're saying an interesting example. Now, they use both the words. They say magnetic or mesmeristic, uh, mesmeric healing is with reference to the Buddhist uh, paritha. Now, what actually happens here is they say that this is a means of... Um, it's a ceremony of blessing water. So they say this monk, he sits in a circle or a hollow square and he has this tiny little rope, you know, the size of the uh, clothesline that we use. And to it is attached many, many strings. And those strings go into a huge container of water. And so the priest, uh, sorry, the monk, sorry, here starts to recite uh, uh, scriptures from the sacred text. Right, And as he continues to do that, he has to have a very clear mind intent that he's trying to bless. And as he's reciting, his mind has to will to bless the water. And so through those strands, right, all that energy goes into the container of water. And not just one monk, several monks come there sitting and they do this you know, over and over and over again with the intent to bless the water. And this water gets supercharged. And once it's supercharged, then this energy, they say, sorry, this water, they say, it becomes highly charged with magnetism. I would just say highly charged with energy. And then this is distributed to the common people. And those who are sick, right, they can actually hold one of those strands and, and stay, which basically means through that strand, right, it's like that etheric cord we have. Through, so through that cord, which is linked to the water, they're able to then absorb more energy compared to someone who just gets, you know, a little bit of water to drink and heal themselves. So the sick are then allowed to hold or connect to that thread for a longer period of time. And so they talk about this as one method of getting healed. So that's an interesting example by itself. So if you look at it, whether you go into a temple in the old days, before the, the people are allowed to dip into the temple, you'll notice that the priests normally walk around and they chant. They have to keep chanting. What do they do? They're charging the entire pond, yes, with this amazing energy so that when you dip, you can cleanse and further purify yourself, not just physically, hopefully not physically, hopefully you had a bath before that, but definitely energetically, emotionally and mentally, you can purify yourself because not everybody could go to the Ganga at that point to purify. So the temples have this, both Hindu temples and Buddhist temples. Right? So if you go to a lot of the old temples around India, you go to Buddhist temples um, in and around India, in Sri Lanka, in other parts, you'll notice it had a pond right, for the water to go. Now, I remember even going uh, to Tirupati or when I go to the Gurudwara, even before you go into the, into the temple, there's usually like, you know, water passing. So even before you go and get a full dip, your feet have to get cleansed. Because remember, the most subtle energy that we have is around the upper part of our body, which is around the crown area, and the densest is near the feet. And so that has to be cleansed, at least to a large extent. So that's why, and plus I guess in the old days, our feet were quite dirty because we actually walked to the temples. We walked to uh, the Gurudwaras, we walked to um, the church and wherever else. So the feet could also be muddy. So maybe one to wash off the, the dirt on the feet, but also to cleanse energetically. Uh, to take off that heavy energy which is at our feet and then go in for a good tip. Anyway, coming back. 
Now, in the, in the case of um, the Islamic and the Christian tradition, what they have is maybe because if you remember, the, the uh, religion of Christianity and uh, Islam came from a dry region, from the Middle East, where they did not have too much water. And so they don't have usually ponds and you know, big pools. They usually have like a small container, which has a little bit of what we call blessed water. But the same thing, the only thing Nasucha says is they put a little bit of salt. So they put, there's a small container, they put water in it, there's a little bit of salt. And then again, the priest says prayers to charge that. And then when you come into the church, you're supposed to bless certain points to again purify yourself. Before you start to say your prayers in the Islamic tradition, you have to wash off certain parts of your body, again to purify because you do not have the luxury of having a full dip or even a bath. There's not that much of water. Yes. So purifying yourself before you come is always been then water has always been a means of healing, cleansing. Even today, I mean, uh, for example, when you come to a new house and if you're a, a Catholic, you actually call a priest and he comes with a small little jar of holy water and he kind of sprinkles it in every room, including the bathroom, right? But to purify again the place. Yes. So it could be used for purification. And here, of course, the water is also used for healing. Okay, I'll just end this. It's over. Um, no. no, you missed the whole plan part. Wait. No, I know this is the only no, end. I'll, I'll talk about okay, it. Okay, so um, where are we? <laughs> An see, advance. Okay. Mesmerism and. Okay, an advantage possessed by me mesmerism over healing of disease by will, right? Is that when uh, will forces are poured down into the physical, uh, there is a danger of driving the disease back into the subtler vehicles uh, from which it came, thus inhibiting the final working out to the physical plane of evil, which has its origin in mind and emotion. You know, the, the reason it's so confusing is um, they're not able to, they're using common words for they're using mesmerism for everything whereas in uh, newer healing like say pranic healing we use uh, we use uh, uh, white prana we use color prana we use uh, divine energy we understand that there are just like there are different types of electrical energy and different types of energy in physics you have different types of energy uh, you know available and each one has a different function but here the word mesmerism is used to encompass all types of healing from all types of energies. So it's very difficult to uh, get a, a clear understanding on exactly what the author is talking about. From my point of view here, if I'm not mistaken, the author is talking about divine healing and receptivity. Because you see, one of the things that is very important in healing is receptivity, right? No matter how powerful the healer is, there is not much that can happen if you're not receptive, all right? If um, even with Masachua, when he used to do healing, sometimes the healing was very fast. Sometimes the healing would take time and he would keep saying, okay, move this, check, check, check. And sometimes it would not even work. And uh, apart from karmic factors and other factors, of course, the healing can be very severe because many times Masachua would do the first healing and then usually he would assign other people or senior people to continue the healing. It's not this, you know, so the symptoms are gone, but the, the proper healing has to happen for a month or a month and a half. Um, so he gives the first installment. The initial capital is the most important, <laughs> right? So, uh, and then you have to just sustain. And there, are some, and there are times that sometimes people are so uh, blocked, they don't, they're just there because they heard this guy can heal. And so he actually asked them for a huge title, not for himself, but he said, you have to do this much. And after we asked Nasi, he says, no, I had to increase the receptivity of that patient because he was not open to the healing. And sometimes they, they are actually patients who have cancer, for example. Yeah, because, you know, no matter how powerful the healer is, you have a, a 10,000 watt or 1 million watt transformer outside and you have rubber wiring, almost no energy or, or uh, electricity is going to flow through that. It doesn't matter. It's not the transformer's fault. There's no conductivity. Now, in Christian tradition, we call that faith, right? But a more uh, you know, scientific explanation would be conductivity. Because wherever there is uh, energy, you always have resistance. 
right? Um, so the more the resistance, the less the flow of energy. If the if the if the conductivity is more, you know, like in the Bible about the woman holding the hem of Jesus, the healing is very instantaneous. Uh, but if there is, um, you know, less, like when Jesus went to, you know, even a brilliant healer, like uh, if you read the Bible, uh, Jesus was one of the, uh, you know, he was he was known for his healing skill, right? He would heal the blind, he would heal, he would raise people from the dead, one person, right? That's what. So, um, <laughs> so uh, you know, he was very very powerful healer, but even him. So normally the way you do is healing is like, okay, be healed. And the person is healed already. But when he went to his hometown, he could barely do any healing there. All right. So because he could not do any healing there. Why? Because probably from the, you see, you might be known all over the world, but in your hometown, you're still the son of a carpenter. So psychologically, you're like, this guy, I remember him. He was running in his diapers. He's going to heal me. <laughs> You know, or even in your family, or Sanctuary. even in your family, yeah. you might be a very good healer, but you know, you can't. So if somebody says, I want to see how good pranic healing is, you know, heal me now. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sorry, but that's not going to work. It's like love, you know, love, you can accept it or you can reject it. You can't force it most of the time. Even if you force <laughs> it, you cannot have, you cannot force someone to love you. You love can't is, call it love if it's yeah, forced. Yeah, so it's not love. So <laughs> it's something else. So. But love, you, you can accept it or you can reject it. I love you. I don't. So done. You know, you see, you can accept it or you reject it. All right. So what they're talking about here, all right, is the advantage possessed by mesmerism. Now, mesmerism, what I'm understanding more and more clearly now, if I'm not mistaken, is that mesmerism is putting someone into, that's why it's confused with hypnosis. Somehow you put the person into a very uh, yin state, you can call it. Let's call it yin state so that it can encompasses several parameters. Including receptivity. Including receptivity. And the person's almost in a trance where the person has no will to resist anymore. They are almost in a, you know, it's like you put a patient under anesthesia, you can do whatever you want, right? So <laughs> basically like that on the energy level, right? That's why it was technically also used as local anesthetic. So, um, so, so you put a person in a very yin state and the person doesn't have the will to resist you, okay? And what happens is, now compare that, that's mesmerism, so then you do healing. Now compare that to uh, healing of disease by will or intention, you know? So you're, okay, you're intending to, you know, so, so you're asking the person to be receptive, you're healing, you know, that's healing by intention, what I'm understanding here. Um, is that when wind forces are poured down into the field, so when the energy is poured down, so say if it's divine energy, because we don't know what energy it is, say, because it's talking from higher planes. So say it's divine energy or emotional energy or higher mental energy is coming down and healing on the physical level. What happens is there's a danger of driving the disease, uh, disease back into the subtler level from which it came. Basically, the healing will not work. <laughs> okay. Basically, the healing will not work. I have experienced this. If a person is not that receptive, that's a problem with using some types of divine energy. Since it's like, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, co colored prana uh, is like, you know, or white prana is like using pebbles and divine energy is like sand. It's so refined that it just, if the person is not receptive, it just passes through the person. It goes in and it just goes out. Nothing ha happened. You just wasted your time. Um, that's why there are ways to make the patient receptive. Um, so now what they're trying to say is, so basically what they're saying is if you use divine healing and if the person has will and you're using the normal healing approach, the healing most probably will not work. If the person uses mesmerizing where the person cannot resist you, you can do whatever you want, which is also dangerous because then the person can't resist. So you have to be ethical. Um, <clears throat> and you can heal the person because the person is a complete, a hundred percent form of receptiveness. Okay, so now what do they mean by this? They mean that if the source is psychological in origin, you see, disease could be, they have symptomatic, you know, let, let's say if a disease is, you have a broken bone, right? You break a bone. That's not psychological in origin. You broke your bone, you fell, right? So not everything is, uh, some people say, oh, is everything psychological? No, no everything is not emotional, right? <laughs> you fall down, you hurt yourself, that's not psychological, right? So, um, unless you jumped off anyway. So, <laughs> so, but, um, but if you, uh, if, if an ailment is psychological, 
it starts first in the emotional mental body. The prana cannot flow properly there. The flow of energy, now this is a complicated, uh, you know, it's part of pranic healing, so we just, you know, skip that topic. But the end result is the, uh, the, the ailment becomes physical in nature, right? It starts emotionally as stress, and that even today's doctors and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, medical personnel, they, they, they know about this. Um, it starts emotionally with stress, with anger, with resentment, with, uh, you know, constant fear. And then it uh, translates into a physical problem. So if a person is not expressive, they have issues with the throat. You know, they don't express themselves because they're, you know, they keep everything in, right? They have issues with thyroid. They have issues with... Uh, Arthritis. And you know, sometimes goes, constipation is just like you keep everything, everything inside. Is stuck. Nothing, yeah. Everything is stuck. It doesn't right? come out. So you know how bad if you have constipated for two, three days. Now, can you imagine 20, 30 years of emotional constipation? <laughs> My goodness. So, um, so basically what happens is now that translates into a physical ailment, right? So from the higher vehicles, it has gone down into the lower or physical vehicles. Now, if a person is not receptive, what can happen is, uh, what does it say? That there is a danger of driving the disease back into the subtler vehicles from which it came. So it came from the subtle, the disease came. So it's an emotional ailment and thus inhibiting the final working out of the physical frame. That means you could not heal it. You could not heal the source of the problem. The root cause. The root cause. You could not heal that because the person was not receptive. But if a person is mesmerized, they don't, they're not uh, going to be resisting. So brr, you just do healing. <laughs> Uh, you know, curative mesmerism is free from this da danger. So good time is to heal them when they're asleep. Yeah. Now this, uh, the pirit, pirit chanting or the pirit ceremony, this is uh, done in the uh, Buddhist tradition. Um, basically, they're just energizing water with, uh, with, uh, with divine energy. Again, so that is reinforcing the, 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 uh, my assumption that they're talking about divine energy. Because the example they're given is chanting from is is a blessing ceremony and blessings is a form of divine energy and also they're saying uh they're reading it from scriptures and holy books so that reinforces because they're using that as an example to reinforce so mesmerism to make it easy is is nothing but i would say healing when a patient is a 100% uh, uh, one hundred percent receptive, or does not, or is in a complete yin state, or in a in a. So maybe if you're healing a patient who's in a coma, you will be calling that mesmerism. Maybe, <laughs> okay. Technically, you could call that mesmerism because they don't have the will. I don't think so, at that time, to resist you, right? So I can mesmerize a baby and do healing. You can mesmerize a baby. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but you cannot resmerize the parents of that baby. <laughs> okay, so. Now, this whole connected with the rope. So there are two ways of healing uh, using the practical approach of chanting. Either you energize the water using uh, blessings um, or you can uh, by chanting. Because remember I said wa water is a capacitor. It holds energy, but doesn't disintegrate it generally. Uh, so it, it holds the energy, whatever you're chanting. And this, by the way, I've, I've, I've experienced, I've seen this. Uh, these uh, pirit ceremonies in Sri Lanka and other parts, they chant for, uh, especially around full moon times and all the whole day, sometimes the whole night, sometimes for two, three days, if it's a big thing. Yeah, so the, they, they take turns, yeah. all the monks, and they keep coming. And, and uh, not one at a time, there's a group. There's a specific number of them, and then they, they rotate. And uh, no, the specific number they chant at one time. I know because I was on the 30th, 38th floor of a building quite a distance away from the temple and I could hear them all night, right, uh, chanting. <laughs> yes, and if you are around that uh, Buddhist temple, you'll suddenly feel, you know, if you're sensitive enough, you can actually feel the vibration. So whether you're in Bhutan near a Buddhist temple or Sri Lanka, like he says, in Colombo where we were, you can actually feel the vibration coming through. Yeah, and, and I'm sure it's there even in other places. Uh, but most of these places are also where monks are studying. And so chanting for them is part of their studies. Now, the other way, apart from the water, is like you hold a rope. But here, again, it's not clear. What do you do with the rope? They so just hold on. Instead of using a cord, energy cord, they're yeah. going to use a physical rope. Yeah. But what are you, holding it like this? No, you just or do you attach it, it to a part of your body? Or do you attach it to the it. affected part? They just hold yeah. on to the rope. 
hold on to the thread connected okay, to the okay. rope. Well, yeah, but I would, you know, tie it around the affected part. Maybe. Yeah, but there are only that many. There are not so many. How many patients what? can sit around that? Uh, yeah, what if they're like 50 patients? They have 50 ropes. And what if the, and then where is the other side tied to? The, the priest, one priest, all the priests? I mean, they no, all connected once together. Once all energized, mm. then they keep it aside. No, no, no. I think they hold it. They don't. They no, don't no, no. continue to hold it. No, that's it? what they're saying. It's like uh, that's what I thought I read. I said, or a sick man may hold a thread connected with the rope. So with the rope that they're holding during the blessing. So either no, or. No, no. When the water is completely charged, it is distributed. Yes, it is the distributed. water is distributed. Or a sick man. Yeah. Not, not. Then the water thing is done. So the water we understand because it's part of the all the thread. Yeah, they hold on the thread while probably I'm assuming they're chanting, right? So otherwise the thread holds not as much energy as water unless it's a really powerful thread. And that is the idea behind the even the Brahmin's thread that they had, you know. The so Master Chua would teach uh, the Kundalini, the inner breath, he would always ask for a thread. Uh, at least in the states, I don't know whether they did that in India. So I know we know that when he's going to be teaching the part of inner breath, we have to run because in the states it's not as common <laughs> to get a thread. I don't know what all we've used. We use packaging stuff and ropes and whatever because someone has to actually stand there and he'll actually rotate the whole thing. He'll actually pull it around and he will uh, ask and he will obviously he's. He's, he's sending energy through the thread. But here, instead of healing, he, this is spiritual development. So uh, we have seen, uh, I have seen this uh, being used, uh, passing of energy through a thread. Uh, and the chakras get highly, highly activated. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that's it, enough. All right, let's go on. Now we're going to use this with reference to plants. Yeah. So they say it may be noted that uh, passing this mesmerism uh, effect on plants is also good. So they say that this actually stimulates the growth of plants. This can also be done with, uh, for example, when we talk, since we're talking about prana healing, we have had this happening in the States. It's happened in India. It's happened in Europe. So people yeah. have actually used the technique of prana healing, the colors that we use for growth to actually enhance their crop. And sometimes the, uh, the growth is so big that people are not too sure, you know, if you actually use fertilizer because of which it was big. I think in Canada, they got investigated by the FDA because Correct. it was too it was so, big. Yeah, the I think the... Tomato and watermelon. So yeah, I think it was pumpkin and, yeah, and uh, tomatoes. And I remember uh, earlier, Mr. Nandakumar used to be there and he had this mango farm and he says those mangoes would actually turn out to be really big uh, during the harvest because of the work that's being done. So you could either charge the water which, which is directed towards your plants, yes, or you take the whole, uh, you know, like a little uh, architectural model and then you bless uh, the, the plants, the roots especially. So coming back to this, so they say there, there are probably very few who practice this in the Western world. However, they call them people who have a green hand or here they say the lucky hands. And so when they touch plants or they take care of plants, they literally bloom. And uh, so it goes on to say that uh, a more common cause for something like this, for this phenomenon to happen, is that they say the composition of the etheric and other, other bodies of the person in relation to the elemental, with association with plants, the elemental kingdom and uh, the kingdom of the uh, plant kingdom, they say that a similar vibration, right, or a dominance in in that uh, person's vehicle is with reference to uh, the elemental, right? Now, for, so for me, basically, it is the love for plants. Now, I love to see flowers. I love to see, uh, you know, flowering uh, trees. But I'm not someone who, who would want to take a pot and you know, start growing. I'm not someone like that. Uh, but there are a lot of people who love to do this. I've seen them uh, when I've traveled uh, through different countries. You'll find them, it's cold, <clears throat> but the lady will come covered, you know, and she has a small little place, maybe five feet by three feet. And she's sitting there, you know, on a tiny little stool and busy trying to pluck and, you know, uh, trim her plants. I've seen it all over. I've, I've seen people who have a whole garden at the back and uh, this lady, she'll put on her gloves and you can see the love. She has this hat that she wears and then she'll go there and sit and actually do it. And, and, and there's so much, uh, you know, it's like artists when you want to show a piece of art, for them their plants are the art. 
the way they've grown, the way they've bloomed, the different types that are there. They really love it. And, and they actually sit and do it. You know, they don't have a, a field of workers sitting and doing their work. They actually go and sit and do it. And it's amazing their connection, their bond. And so uh, that is part of what they're referring to here, this bond. And it's, it's there, there is a, there's something dominant in their vehicles with reference to the plant kingdom. <laughs> so for example, they say, you know, when, when you behave a certain way, they say you probably were a dog in a pre previous life or a cat, right? So something <laughs> uh, about the way you are characteristically comes out. So this is with reference to plants, the love uh, or the bond that they have with plants. We explain the cause, the, the source of that rumor, right? According to Master Cho, it's because, uh, you know, people who are, don't have the concept of soul, they attach to animals. Remember about that we were talking about. That's why they say you were born as a dog or a cat. You <laughs> no, weren't no, born no. as a dog. You just attached yourself to one and forced yourself. No, no, to... I'm saying sometimes the way we behave is like a dog. Ah, yeah. That way. All right. Okay. The last bit before we come to the end of this chapter. Uh, we probably have to stop with this. Now, there are also what you call nature spirits, right? Or, or there is the kingdom, uh, the Deva kingdom. These nature beings are also around. Their work is to get certain things done. So even for a plant, there are actually this little nature spirits that actually help the leaves to come out, the bud to come out, and then to bloom as a flower, right? For that plant to grow and become a tree, flourish uh, with fruits and flowers or whatever it is. So there are a lot of these all around, right? Now there are these nature beings uh, that do not have too much of will and no proper sense of responsibility, which basically means that you can actually overpower them. And they are sometimes also misused. So they say that these uh, possessing a little sense of responsibility or will are not strongly developed and can easily be dominated by mesmerizing them. Yes. And so uh, there are operators who use them based on the power they have. Say, for example, they're able to create something. They use them to, based on their power, to follow their orders Right? Not, because there is very little will. They cannot say no. Right? So when you, watch, uh, when you watch Harry Potter, what is that thing called? That little thing with a little rug on it? Topi? House Elf. House, house Elf? Or, all right. It, it can't really say no to its master. right? And so it has to follow everything and it can get freedom only in a certain way. So there are a lot of these. Topi <laughs> yeah, is correct, from correct. Snow White, man. No, no, That's no. Topi. No, Dobby. Dobby is the inact no, unactivated by basic chakra in matter. snow. <laughs> anyway, so the point is there are these, nat uh, these uh, nature beings. They're not physical, right? They are on the energy. They only have an etheric body. They are on the energy level. And so magicians might actually use them. And uh, only, only to the extent of the power that that little nature being or that deva has. They can only use that property. They can't do something else, right? <clears throat> and so uh, this particular uh, particular nature being will then follow the will of the master, in this case, the magician, and will faithfully ex execute it, right? So I was telling Amit, I think, you know, all these movies where they show this magician goes into this big, huge, uh, you know, case and locks himself up. <laughs> I think maybe these little things come and open up the locks. Anyway, I have no clue. Uh, so I, I was just thinking wild things at that point. And then lastly, to end, it says, it is also possible, with reference to what Amit was saying earlier, that uh, mesmerism powers can also be used to, to, take, um, to take the etheric body. I think it's the etheric, right? Oh, astral well, body. Recently died. Yeah, recently died, who are still hovering over uh, or close about us in their astral bodies. So they can even use them. And again, same thing applies like we mentioned earlier. Their will is not too strong, even though they've left the body. For whatever reason, they're not very, very strong. And so astrally, they're able to mesmerize them and kind of make them so receptive to start doing their bidding. Yes. So that is the end of mesmerism. So it may be noted in passing that it's <laughs> possible to mesmerize plants. You know, they can't even see you. Can you come here? All right. Thank you. They are probably very few clucky hand. You know, it didn't work for me, this whole, uh, I don't have, I, I haven't tried in a long time. What, mesmerism? No, the, uh, you know, obviously you can mesmerize plants because they also have minimal will, right? I think it has to do with the quality of their emotional body. Um, so, um, but you know, maybe that's why it didn't work for me because I think while I was planting the uh, seeds, I was thinking of eating them. 
Oh, you went to the end result. Mm. Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you know, for, so, the, for them, it's, it's to just... see it bloom, you know, to see the flower bloom or to see yeah. that, that. I was uh, visualizing that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so a different, different uh, vibration. I will right? trick the plant this time. Oh, I will love you. Um, so um, let me try. But uh, the more common cause, however, is of course you can use specific prana. You can use specific prana to uh, bloom or kill the plant. Also. Um, now you can use that. So that's why they're known as lucky hand. But it's not lucky. It's just to do with their energy and what they subconsciously. Oh, like I'll use the word unconsciously transfer from from their energy body uh, and you know into the plant, right? So that's good. Uh, more common cause, however, of such phenomena has to do with the composition of etheric and other bodies and the relationship of the person to the elementals. The most friendly to him being those whose element is preponderant in his vehicles. I have no idea what that means. So probably if you have an earth elemental in your body and that is from earth element and they connect better, God knows. Uh, there, is earth, there, are, there are those elements. Uh, or they're talking about the physical elemental, which is a part of your system or beings. Uh, I have no idea, but there seems to be some compatibility uh, requirement <laughs> here. I guess uh, so because, you know, there are people that you know who can love dogs or love cats, but they will not take care of a human being in the house like they do the cats or the dogs. Right, and there, there are people who love their plants so much that they may not even care for another human being. So it's it's definitely a compatibility issue. <laughs> they have a better relationship with their dog plants. Dog doesn't argue with them, right? So it's easy to love them move. compared to people yeah. who would talk back or explain. Uh, nature spirits possess <laughs> nature spirits <laughs> possessing this little <laughs> sense of responsibility. Nature spirits. There's a broad category of nature spirits. Uh, I remember Master Chua talking about this. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember uh, what he said at the moment. I think it's somewhere in my notes. Uh, but he says, of course, there are different types of nature spirits. And many of the nature spirits, they will be happy to follow your instructions. Uh, and they will be happy to comply with your instructions. It's not about dominating them as such. It's about uh, probably teamwork. Um, uh, and, uh, and, but, you know, they can also, to a certain extent, fool you. Um, you know, some people channel books written, uh, actually they think it's being channeled by higher beings, but it's actually being channeled by elementals and nature spirits. <laughs> they <laughs> so, can be quite mischievous as well. They can be mischievous. See, um, like this guy yeah, looks nice and mischievous there. Anyway. So there are different types of so nature beings. The, if you go to Google, you just... One of the it. groups of nature spirits, um, there, there's a group of nature spirits that's in charge of building the form, building the form. That's their specialization. So they are building the form for the plants, for everything. So they are basically form builders. That's their, you know, specialization. So uh, you see, we talked about the permanent atom. Remember the permanent seed. So the blueprint comes from there. If you read Achieving Oneness, the father and mother supply the raw materials, but where are the workers? The workers are the nature spirits. Yeah. Okay. So that's one. Now, uh, uh, here sometimes they might be using, uh, you know, nature spirits as elementals or there are positive elementals. They could call them also nature spirits. I don't know how they're using it in this context. Uh, but yeah, you can use it to satisfy your needs or wants or desires. Just like when you light uh, incense, we already spoke about this. It attracts green points of light, which are uh, energy form. So they're in technically defined as spirits right uh you know because they are made of energy you know spirit comes word if i'm not mistaken it comes from the word breath you know something very subtle uh, something very very uh, so it's made of energy it doesn't have physical form uh so uh that's why it's called nature spirit um so it attracts this green point of light and then you remember if you read the book uh psychic self-defense uh, practical psychic self-defense for home and office by master chokok street he talks about instructing or giving a gentle command to them to clean the whole room. So you are basically doing that, right? Or in the past, uh, there were a certain uh, perfume that you can use. The lady would use certain perfume or certain oil uh, that will attract these rosy red, I think it's pinkish red or rosy red points of light. And basically what they will do is once those rosy red point of light come, they will ask this, uh, they will ask them, okay, make that man go for me. Right, so you know, uh, seduction elementals or spirits, Special love, low, low, low. Okay, that's why you know, if you see the cartoons, it's usually rosy red, the 
the vapors, but it's actually a part of the inner teaching. Uh, what perfume, you know, um, the, it is, um, so make now, one of the questions I was asked once is, why would we want the man to go for us? <laughs> you have to understand this is a long time ago. Uh, in those days, if you have a person working, say for the government or in a court, uh, it, is, uh, it is important to, uh, you know, to get, married to him so that you have stability because in those days you, what you take for granted today you do not get there are no supermarkets there are no uh, big basket swiggy uh, uber eats ubers uh, you want to go somewhere you have to either walk it but if you have someone you can ask them to arrange it for you and they basically take care of you so it, it was a different time and different needs so they have to create uh, ways because a lot of people are competing for that person <laughs> right especially if the post is good. Yeah. So, so when we're talking about the fruits uh, and the, the plants, right? For example, we're talking about the form, uh, the nature spirits that take care of the form. So if it was a mango tree, say if Mr. Nanda Kumar, he can only expect to get mangoes from that tree. You can't say, okay, you know, I want some apples as well. Those, that form builder can only build mango and make, make the mango better, but cannot bring some other form. In, in other words, they're workers you know, the workers, you have to supply them with the material. You have to supply them with everything, but they get to, they to get things done. That's why they're extremely beneficial if you're doing healing uh, and you want to regenerate and do those kind of things. Maybe One I last thing. spoken about that. The dead thing, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever she said, what does it say? You know, this chapter, uh, you know, it's actually really good, but the thing is, it's not explained. It's explained a little vaguely. Words, yeah. But if you look at this chapter, just to summarize, they've sp uh, spoken about uh, you know, the animal magnetism or divine energy. They've spoken about pranic energy. They've, in the first place, they, they've spoken about the principle of cleansing and energizing, yeah. removal of fluid and putting into fluid. And they've spoken process. about the healing, uh, you know, the consciousness being transferred. They've spoken about... Um, um, the intent and will. To the heal. psychic link. They've spoken about healing by proxy. Yeah. Uh, you know, taking off someone else's pain. They've not explained how to do any of this. But at least, you know, it's good information. Uh, and uh, they have not explained why you would even want to do some of the things that they've explained. And, um, you know, energized with, uh, you know, they've spoken about contamination to a certain extent. They've spoken about psychic osmosis. They've spoken about the principle of receptivity. So if you've, if you've, learned, if you've studied, if you power. have a certain uh, background knowledge in healing, it's very, very a good chapter to, to read and understand. Uh, and appreciate. <laughs> okay, so... Sorry, question. I just want to answer one question. Yeah. So I wouldn't suggest you ask for nature spirits to help with your healing. Instead, ask for the higher beings, which are the uh, healing ministers, the healing angels. They um, have much more power and energy to help you with your healing. And since they are higher, they might have these form uh, nature spirits under them as well. So they can help create maybe a better liver or lungs or whatever it is that you're trying to work on the physical body. So just invoke to the nature spirits, sorry, invoke to the uh, healing ministers, healing angels rather than the nature spirits. We only invoke for the nature spirits when we talk about uh, uh, crystals, right? So only in crystal healing at one point to help that crystal become more effective as an instrument we've, we've called upon the nature spirits. Yeah. All right, we are so done we with that. Um, so the Thank question, you. yeah, we're done. Uh, one question, last two sessions, there was when healer dies, patient gets sick. It means if you don't discharge, look, hypothetical question, if you don't discharge the energy, please dispose the energy properly. That's a crazy, like, you know, that, that type of question is like, ah, so, you know, I was doing a surgery, but I didn't want to throw any of the biochemical, bio, uh, bio waste out. I just, I just left it around. Is that, is that all right? Um, uh, is there a way to avoid that? You have to dispose of it properly, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so one of my friends, when he was, a, I think he was an intern, right? and he was in the operating room, just one of his first surgeries. It, you know, those days they didn't have the LED lights. I think it was hot. He took one of the cotton and he was wiping himself and he threw it. And then for half an hour, he didn't realize that they were keeping a count of the... <laughs> amount of cotton balls used so yeah, he, they spent a long time looking for it and then he's like i uh i used that <laughs> so, yeah because they they, they so have that to they don't leave anything. To, yeah they don't leave it inside the patient's body right he they got, have to count he got a good uh <laughs> scolding, good scolding. <laughs> <laughs> so so look um and i don't know whether they I, for me uh, i don't think that 
theoretically it can go back to the healer after they you know it depends if the patient if the healer dies tomorrow and still it is not literally connected you see it's still connected to the healer through etheric threads if you read the basic pranic healing books there's these etheric threads that are connected to the patient to the healer through this dirty energy and that's why you need the salt to break it down okay now Provided you, that healer kept the water in the same place all his life, uh, you know, didn't flush it down the toilet maybe or something like that. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't think so. And also, it's just one case. You can't, you can't show proof with just one case. You need to at least do it three, four, five, six times. And I forgot to experiment with that because, you know, it takes too long. You have to die and check, right? So... Anyway, so yes, family will not accept uh, yeah, uses from a healer. Okay, so in a trance state. Okay, veggie garden. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that is. Uh, uh, what angel? Wait, uh, no, wait. There was a question here also. Pancreas regeneration. Which angel to call for? Uh, I would call for an endocrinologist. Um, they're pretty powerful angels when it comes to uh, treatment of pancreas and uh, regeneration. Of them. <laughs> Technically, just ask for all the healing agents to supplement it, but definitely. Uh, all right, so. you, you can just say angel if there's an angel for the pancreas, but just in general, just call on the beings of uh, healing yeah. and the ministers. Healing angels, healing, healing ministers. All right. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, if there are specific ones. They really do yeah. a good job. They have enough consciousness. If they have enough consciousness to help you regenerate the pancreas, they have enough consciousness to come. All right. Yeah. So uh, along with him, we invoke me. Okay. So done. Yeah. Finish. Okay, people. So the weekend is here. Enjoy two days before we see you on Monday. Oh. We're going to be talking about uh, shells and shields. What's the difference between a shell and a shield? Uh, a shell is like an egg shell. That's a a shield. shield is like uh, the one that you use when you go to war. And why would you need the eggshell? I don't know. It's, we'll, we'll, we'll read To about draw it. the face. Okay, guys. All right, let's end uh, by saying a Thanksgiving prayer. <laughs> Close your eyes. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokot, Silat Maha Guruji Nen. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, healing ministers, healing angels, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance. Thank you for all the patience that you've had with us. Thank you for the greater clarity and a deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. We thank you in full faith. With gratitude, respect, and love, we thank you. Thank you, everyone. Just quickly, one second. So, um, 14th. All right, 14th, okay. So just to remember that... Uh, Next week, we'll have it all through since 15th luckily happens to be a Saturday. Otherwise, I, I thought we would have to take a break. Yeah. So I'll see you. Um, we'll see you on Monday. And then we'll see you on Wednesday. And then we'll see you on Thursday. And then we'll see you on Friday. And we'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> I'm just talking oh. about all the programs. <laughs> and Hatik and uh, Founders Day. Not it's with the study too session. much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with my jump out of his skin. <laughs> Well, we finished 18 chapters. Congratulations. We have just High five. more to go. Right? Yeah, only seven more. Seven. I think 25 chapters. So, yeah, 25. good going, guys. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, you've retained and c kept your cords <laughs> connected your, with, your with us. Your ectoplasms have yes, been... Yes, uh, yeah. And, and with the book and with uh, Arthur Powell. Thank you so much. So, but, enjoy your weekend. Well, it just gives you an idea how long it actually takes to study something, right? Yeah. And even then... Um, you know, you might need to revisit it a couple of times. So, you know, uh, when people say, ah, I studied uh, four books this month or, uh, you know, uh, after three months or something. Yeah, yeah, this year I did seven, eight books. I said, wow, I can't do that. Wow, that's amazing. So, you know, uh, before we would have uh, these application forms that would come for higher levels and people would write different things. So I remember in, in Karnataka, I'm, I'm from Karnataka, right? So we would have applications. And so we have this Food for the Hungry and we start off this 30 district project. And so invariably, everybody would write 30 district project, 30 district project. So I'm thinking when they say study, it'd be ethnic double. <laughs> <laughs> At least you studied that one. And that's not there. <laughs> So. so anyway, guys, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Enjoy your weekend. And um, yes, see you on Monday. Bye. Bye.
it feels like these talk shows. Bye. <laughs> I'll end for all. Bye, everyone.